If you can mute themselves so to prevent uh, sound disruption, and you unmute only when you speak. Hmm? Good evening and welcome to all our prospective students that have joined us at Regenesis Institute of Management in Mumbai. Uh, this evening I'm accompanied by our esteemed academics as well as our founder, Dr. Marco Saravania, who's joining us from South Africa uh, to just give you an oversight on what to expect when you join us in your journey of studies at Regenesis Institute of Management. For those of you that have just come in, welcome. If you could be patient for those that are joining, uh, that have committed to join us this evening and have accepted the invite, you're very welcome for the next five minutes to grab a cup of tea or coffee or a snack while you settle in and we're waiting for the others to join us in five minutes. Thank you very much to those that have so promptly arrived into the uh, open day interactive session here. We're uh, very thrilled that you could make this evening with us. So I'm giving you five minutes to, to grab a snack, tea or coffee, and join us again when we kickstart the session off formally. Good evening and welcome. Uh, for those that have just joined us, thank you very much for accepting our invite for this uh, open day interactive session with you and your family to give you insight into why you should be a student and a graduate of the Regenesis Institute of Management uh, doing the international qualification through our South African Regenesis Business School in South Africa. You're very welcome to take a two minute break to grab a cup of tea or coffee while we're waiting for the others to join us. And thank you so much for being so prompt to join us this evening. I'm joined by a panel of esteemed academics from South Africa, as well as Mumbai, and the founder of Regenesis Business School, Dr. Marco Saravania this evening, who will give us insight into the business management and um, academia, as well as why the Regenesis Business Institute in South Africa. So a two minute break for you before we commence.
Good evening and welcome to all our prospective students and future graduates of the Regenesis Institute of Management in Mumbai, um, ending up in South Africa for an international qualification in our programs. Uh, thank you very much for making this appointment with us this evening. We are absolutely thrilled to have you connect with us. I'm joined, my name is Indrani Reddy. I am South African born, uh, Indian national, um, well, I suppose South Africa will say I'm a South African national as well, so I'm an Indian-born South African, and I'm currently in the Mumbai office, so we're calling you from uh, our Mumbai offices with uh, Dr. Serbi, who's our academic, our general manager, uh, Mr. Santosh Naya. We have our sales executive as well as our marketing with us as well this evening, and then from abroad in South Africa, we're very thrilled to have with us our academics, Dr. Abinanda, as well as Dr. Conrad, who heads up our postgrad um, quali academic qualification and our financial management, as well as our esteemed um, and very well-known founder, Dr. Marcus Sadovania. I'm going to hand over now to our founder of Reach Genesis Business School in South Africa, Mumbai, and Nigeria, and um, have an introduction with him. Over to you, Dr. Marcus Sadovania. Good, good evening to all of you in India. Um, I, would talk, I will talk a little bit about uh, Regenesis Business School, who we are, what type of programs we offer, and why you should really consider studying with Regenesis. So in terms of why, I think that's the most important question. So when, let me start with that. So, so Regenesis is internationally recognized type of global business school with uh, over 200,000 students, or two lakhs in Indian terms, of students from uh, across the world, from uh, over 200,000, 200 countries from across the world. So all, all qualifications are recognized globally, and they are of high quality. So with, with the Genesis qualification, students can get jobs globally, not only in South Africa or India, but also in Dubai, Europe, America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and those are main main um, education destinations that the students uh, uh, consider. So, so first thing is really quality, quality, globally recognized qualification. Second uh, reason why is uh, financial. So we believe we really offer great value for money. So you can, you can obtain international qualification, with almost half of the cost, what it will cost you to do your MBA or, or postgraduate uh, degree or a bachelor's degree in the UK or Canada or Australia or, or New Zealand or Dubai or in Europe anywhere. So it's really two main reasons. One is quality and second one is, is cost. So getting internationally recognized qualification at really great uh, value for money. Uh, third reason is uh, our qualifications are very flexible. So many of students and parents are currently um, concerned about what's going to happen in terms of lockdowns, in terms of global pandemic, you know. You know if they enroll with some international education institution in UK or, or Canada or America, and they cannot travel there, and they, they pay their fees. So what Regenes has done, we have uh, we made all qualifications available really in a very flexible way. So, which means if lockdown situation does not get improved, students will, st will be able to start their qualifications on time and they will study uh, online and when lockdown situation improves, then they will be able to travel, those who decide to travel to, to South Africa or, or to buy. So we have several options and we, really, we truly offer type of international uh, uh, qualification where students get best of, of, of three worlds. You know, they get exposure to best of Mumbai, Mumbai being uh, financial capital of India, and then uh, best of South Africa, especially Johannesburg, especially specifically Santon, which is uh, which is Santon is part of Johannesburg, which is uh, the richest square mile of Africa as a continent, which has uh, 1.3 billion people and uh, about 52 countries. So, and then on the way to South Africa, students have an uh, option of uh, getting an imm immersion in Dubai. So we're talking really uh, for those students who decide to, to get really fully, truly international experience, to get experience of Mumbai, Dubai, 
and South Africa. Obviously, students have option to study only online or only in South Africa you know, uh, or only in India. So that flexibility is very important, especially considering uh, lockdown uh, uh, considerations and uncertainties regarding global, global pandemic. So in terms of qualifications, so the Genesis offers a variety of qualifications, all the way from bachelor's degrees to diploma certificate programs, MBA, including doctorate, doctorate program. Maybe just to share with you a little bit about South Africa. South Africa is a, is a beautiful country. And those of you who have not been in South Africa, it's truly beautiful, you know, for, for many reasons. You know, from a nature point of view, at the beautiful game reserves, at beautiful beaches, at beautiful mountains and deserts. And it's a really um, a beautiful country with clean air. And, and as, as compared to India, if you look at geography, if you look at the map, uh, there are only 50 million people in South Africa uh, on an area almost like, uh, geographically almost like, like India, which has 1.3 uh, billion people, which means India is much more uh, densely populated, which means you know, uh, uh, air and pollution is much you know, higher in India as compared to South Africa. South Africa has beautiful, clean skies, which is hard to see in, yeah, in, in, uh, in Mumbai, especially in Delhi, those of you you are from Delhi, you know, you know, you are aware of problems with Delhi pollution and air and this. So, so yeah, so South Africa is a really beautiful country. A lot of opportunities for uh, entrepreneurs, especially people who are entrepreneurial minded. South Africa is gateway to Africa. South Africa is the most developed country in Africa. Uh, so some, of the, some of you who have not been in South Africa, when you come to Johannesburg, you'll experience better infrastructure than what you experience in, in London, oh. or Rome, or Paris, or New York. Oh. Uh, beautiful highways, beautiful shopping malls, beautiful hotels, and uh, beautiful really infrastructure. So, so South Africa being gateway to Africa, which, uh, as I mentioned, has a population of over a billion people in 54 countries, presents a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs, for business development. Uh, South Africa has more than 120 Indian companies working in, in South Africa and also across, across Africa. So all those Indian companies that decide to do business in Africa, they come to South Africa, they set up their headquarters in South Africa and then from South Africa, they, they expand across Africa. So a lot of Indian companies, they prefer to, to actually employ Indian staff because uh, Indian people have a reputation of being uh, hardworking, of being uh, very ambitious and being uh, ethical, especially in the areas uh, of, of uh, in terms of competencies in areas of engineering and, and technology. Um, India uh, is considered as a global type of uh, uh, software capital of the world and engineering capital of the world. So, so that's really what I would like to say to you uh, about South Africa. It's a beautiful country. Um, there are a lot of opportunities you know, for jobs, for entrepreneurs. Uh, and Regenesis provides really great opportunities in terms of providing quality, so quality education at really uh, low, reasonable low price, at half the price what people would pay if they go and study in the UK or Canada, or America, or Australia. And flexibility is, is very important. You know, we believe that not many uh, global uh, universities offer flexibility which Regenesis uh, office. Regenesis in South Africa is considered as a leader in uh, digital education. You know, we have very advanced technology, uh, which includes uh, video-based learning material. We call it uh, fifth-generation learning material, which is very interactive, very engaging. Uh, the students can do everything online, you know, from watching videos to watching classes, live streaming classes, interactions with faculty, access to electronic libraries, access to presentations and uh, even doing assignments and examinations. You know. so, so that's really a natural introduction uh, to Regenesis and to South Africa. And uh, I would like to ask you, you know, if you have questions, maybe at the end of these presentations, you'll have some opportunities for questions and answers. Yeah, okay, thank you, Dani, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Marco, for that insight into the Regenesis Business School. Um, I think it's so important that you touched on the points of South Africa as a destination, the ties that South Africa has had with India, which is now being celebrated in a huge way in South Africa. It's 160 years of arrival of Indian nationals into South Africa who've contributed largely to the South African economy, 
and are known to be um, phenomenal entrepreneurs, as well as astute businessmen in fields of that they dominate in finance, technology, and engineering. And so that skill set um, is really required and, and appreciated, especially when it comes from India. And with the high unemployment rate that India suffers with the, with the population that's over a billion, uh, these are sought after destinations like South Africa to be able to secure a brighter future for students that not only want an international qualification, but want to start a career abroad as well. I'm going to move over to uh, Dr. Abinanda, who spent the last seven years in South Africa as one of our academics. Dr. Abi has an extensive career, both in business and academia, and she heads up our postgraduate qualification. She's the head of that department, and that really is our honors degree going on to the MBA degree. Dr. Abi, over to you. Thank you, Anjali. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, as Marco said, uh, that uh, in comparison to New Delhi, right, uh, South Africa is a place of bliss. I am from New Delhi, and I can tell you, your sensory organs will be at peace, right, when you stay in South Africa. So, um, uh, and and the climate is impeccable, right, and it's extremely important for you to come and visit and witness, right, <laughs> that um, how South Africa looks like. But as um, and Rani said, I can see quite a lot of females, bright, beautiful females um, in here, right from Neha, Niru, Sivani, Moshami. Uh, you might be feeling that, um, that what about a female being in South Africa? Me as a single female, right, I landed in South Africa seven years ago. And it says that you have to be bold, blaze, smart, and that you actually are. Right. And, uh, and sky is the limit for you uh, if you come in South Africa. Um, the competition rate is, is almost one-tenth of, uh, of, uh, of India. I think one-tenth is also less, right? It's almost like one by hundred. So, um, uh, so if you complete your PDBM in, in India, then, the, then you come to South Africa and complete your MBA, right? And the best part of MBA South Africa is um, the culture is very, very different right the, uh, the the students of MBA in South Africa are the top-notch professionals right um, from from the uh, biggest top-notch banks to IT to um, uh, to any other sector that you can think and imagine you meet the CEOs as MBA students um, uh, in South Africa MBA class so it's it, it provides you a great opportunity to network to meet have a chat and discussion um, uh, with such big shots right and the and the better you present yourself after completing your MBA the chances of getting hired, right? being poached uh, in the class is very, very high. So, um, and it's also important to understand that the kind of um, MBA South Africa um, offers is the type of modules together that would create you a master of all and jack of all, not like jack of all and master of none, right? Um, because it starts right from HRM to innovation, to entrepreneurship, to design thinking, uh, to financial management, and you'll have a fair understanding of each module, right? And then uh, the way we prepare you with with um, with um a lot of exposure through um, through uh, events, right? These events are forums, HR uh, forums or big forums uh, that happens on a weekly basis. Uh, nowadays, it's like uh, through webinars, but I'm sure Corona is going to be over soon. Last year, we had weekly sessions, right? Forums, wherein all the top-notch elitists of the world, right, of the uh, South African market, um, they come in as a panelist and discuss um, in these forums about um, uh, various new um, factors, like digitization, like um, eruption of AI, et cetera. And that gives you an opportunity again to speak with the people that, that you would never get, right? Um, uh, uh, I Unless and until such forums are um, are arranged, and we arrange it on a on a weekly for, um, uh, basis, right? So um, so as as I have uh, said, that the the moment you complete your PDBM uh, in in India, come to South Africa and see how um, a different market um, looks like, right? Very bright and sparkly, and it's always open for um, smart students like yourself. Thank you, Indrani. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Abby. We had uh, some female students also connect with us one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, and it was amazing to see the number of Indian females feeling courageous and bold enough to make a transition to go into a foreign country as young as uh, 20 years old. And I think this is really important to also um, highlight that our, our campus in South Africa is based in a city called Santon. Uh, this is the epicenter of economy in South Africa, as well as 
on the African continent. So from a safety perspective, uh, it really is the highlight to be in this particular zone. So it's, it's very safe, very protected. Uh, we're in the heart of Santon. Uh, the, the residence that our students stay is some six to seven kilometers uh, from the campus. Um, the traffic is not as hectic as Mumbai. So on a, on a weekday, probably about a 25 minute drive to the campus and on a weekend, uh, probably five to six minutes to get there. Um, so just from that perspective, I think that we'd, we'd want to have a good selection of both male and female students joining us in our next intake. Abby, if I could just ask you to, to touch on um, the development model that we use, the holistic development model that we use, I think that would really touch on the hearts of the families in India to understand what is really the founding principles of our of how we, we develop our students, please. Right, thank you, Indrani, for giving that opportunity. So um, for all of you new, sparky, intelligent um, students, um, we don't measure a student's um, intelligence, right? Uh, only through rational intelligence, right from sales department to marketing department to academics department, everyone that you speak to, we believe that, uh, that you are not defined only through rational intelligence, right? Uh, we believe that it's, it's four intelligences that comprises a, a person's intelligence, right from spiritual intelligence to emotional intelligence, rational intelligence, and physical intelligence. Through teaching, right, through um, through different modules, right, from HR to, uh, to finance, we would let you know that how important it is to understand that who you are, right? Why do you exist in this world? What is the importance? Why Sivani? Why Neha? Why Niru? Why Mo uh, Moshumi? Right, and why do you think that you are doing MBA? Why do you think that, uh, that you would be studying with Regenesis Business School in South Africa? how this, all this are connected, right? And, how, and what do you, at the end of the day, not only contribute for your family, for yourself, right? For your business or for your, uh, for, for your job, but how do you contribute and, and bring changes in others' lives? And you would see that after five years or six years, you would come back and, and talk to Dr. Abby, Marco and Indrani, that, um, that the, uh, the moment I got the purpose of why do I exist in this world has given me all the answers. And, and that is what uh, we do every time, right? Whether it's a numeric module or a theoretical module we would let you know the purpose of you being you right so um, and 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 that is what would take you back to your tradition to your family to all the bonds that we have in our lives and we keep on connecting dots right um, uh, right from the day of your birth until the last breath that you take so uh, this is the philosophy that we um, uh, that is embedded in everyone's personality in regenesis thank you Indrani. Thank you, Abby. I'm now going to move over to Dr. Conrad. Um, and Conrad really heads up our academic, uh, he's our academic head for our financial um, uh, sector. He uh, manages the um, Bachelor of Computer. Am I saying it right, Conrad? Sorry, I just uh, blanked uh, there. That's yeah. fine, Indrani. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly correct that. That's, that's not a problem. That, thanks, uh, Indrani. Thanks for so, hello everybody, I'm Conrad, as Indrani mentioned, um, as such as being a facilitator on um, our postgraduate qualifications, I'm also academic head for our bachelors of accounting science um, degree, so that's our um, accounting qualification. So just to quickly give you a background in terms of the um, qualification that I had, um, as well as also um, the modules that I facilitate on. So the modules that I facilitate on, mostly at postgraduate level, and that's economics and financial management. Now I know normally that's a concern for um, some students, especially when it comes to the finance side of things, especially um, postgraduate MBA level. But um, um, be assured that we do take you um, through the basics of economics and finance and we build up your knowledge to an advanced level so that you, that you can actually go and apply that knowledge um, in industry. Remember, um, to increase that likelihood of being employed, um, you need that scarce skill and those scarce skills, especially financial skills, that is what we will teach you um, at postgraduate level, MBA level, undergraduate level as well. So just in terms of the um, accounting qualification that I had, um, that qualification um, targets specifically individuals that want to pursue a career in a financial field. If I say financial field, so that would be obtaining that uh, scarce um, financial skills um, that industry requires. So in other words, um, what they need in terms of their needs and um, demands and requirements. So um, if, if I say scarce skills, financial skills, that would be in the fields of accounting, um, financial accounting specifically, um, auditing, taxation, financial management and cost and management accounting. So um, basically what, I, what I'm saying is um, at 
uh, undergraduate level as well as postgraduate level, um, we provide you um, with that uh, scarce skills that is needed by industry to increase your likelihood of actually um, getting employment. Um, yeah, and that is at um, postgraduate and undergraduate level. And also, um, even if you have never done certain modules before, because I know that is sometimes a concern, especially in the finance uh, field, economics field, even other theoretical modules, we take you through the very basics and build up your knowledge so that you can actually go and apply it. And as uh, Dr. Abby has mentioned, um, we um, also have a lot of industry professionals in our classes, which you can uh, network with and uh, chances of uh, you um, being post, uh, well, poached uh, while studying, um, especially at postgraduate level, um, you know, that just uh, enhances your um, chances of that. Um, thanks, Indrani. Happy to take any questions. Conrad, uh, the, the, some of the concerns that came up was uh, around financial management, where students felt quite intimidated. And what we've done with SA, and I just want it's an addition to the to those new students coming, is that we've arranged to have a student assist program to be able to have contact with the lecturers. Uh, across the timetable to be able to give more support for these modules as well. Um, and it's more just an affirmation uh, rather than a question to people that are coming in. That was uh, the last semester concern around finance where students were just not uh, financially minded and felt a little bit lost. So there's a lot of support around that. And talking about support, I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Serbi, who's uh, based in Mumbai, who's really the first point of receiving the students once they've passed the sales journey and joined our home. Um, Dr. Serbi, over to you. And then uh, following you, I'll touch on the student uh, assistance program as well. Thank you, Indrani. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to continue the uh, talk from Conrad, where he says that a lot of students have concern about the support and if they've not got a solid foundation in a subject. So similarly, I can understand the concerns of students and parents who are deciding to send their kids to another country to study. And what we do in the first year in India is make sure that they're absolutely comfortable with the new system of education. We do rigorous uh, cultural sensitivity training so that the students are prepared uh, all the knowledge that they need. Uh, all of the tips and tricks that are required to travel, to stay and to study in a new continent, in a new country, away from home. Uh, we start at the grassroots level. We start with uh, 40 plus hours every semester of English training, of business communication training, of uh, personality de development training. Uh, additionally, we have a work readiness uh, series workshops. So it is a series of six workshops. We start on uh, your confidence building. We start on resume development, interview skills. Uh, we talk about personal branding, dining etiquettes, and professional and uh, in your professional journey that would help you and boost you and make you stand out of the crowd. We pay attention individually to each student and to the needs of the environment, the needs of the corporates. Our curriculum is designed. Uh, uh, very intensely uh, that you hire uh, as a person who's working uh, uh, 20, 20 plus years ahead. So uh, we have additional courses that are offered to you, uh, such as digital marketing, artificial intelligence. Uh, we even do courses on advanced Excel, basic to advanced skill. And what we do, uh, Dr. Also, in terms of the skills that you require to work as an individual, uh, we ensure that uh, you're going into the working world completely armored, prepared. You've got all of the weapons in your armory that you need to actually face a corporate world, uh, which includes two internships as well. Uh, so uh, basically, the Regenesis model of work is nurturing you, not just educating you. And I think uh, that's the most important principle that everybody at Regenesis follows. Um, uh, that's all from my side, Indrani. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Sarvi. I think if you could just talk a little bit about the onboarding process in terms of uh, the work readiness program. I know you spoke about the 40 classes, but just if you could just unpack that 
titles of what we cover yeah. without going into the detail of it, but just what do we cover so that students feel onboarded with us, as well as the uh, transition for the immersion program in South Africa, just quickly, um, you know, what are some of the cares that we take care of actually to get students adjusted uh, to the cultural shift that they will experience? Uh, we start in Rani at the very beginning of the session with an orientation program that is not designed typically to tell them what they're going to study, how they're going to do it, but to make them comfortable in the new environment and the new system of education that you, they're going to enter. So that's where we start at. Uh, the cultural sensitivity training that I spoke about earlier is designed uh, through a lot of concern regarding a student's ability to adjust comfortably into a completely new culture of work as well as social uh, circles that they're going to be part of. Um, what we typically do, our main concern for each student is to ensure uh, that they have all of the right skills that they require to fit into the corporate world. So the work readiness series that I spoke about, uh, this is a, a weekly series, a series of six workshops that we hold for students, uh, where we uh, explain to them, uh, or in, in fact, we train them on uh, business etiquette, on dining etiquette, on uh, all of the features that they require as a professional, uh, right from the dressing sense to the presentation skills, uh, the networking, uh, optimizing uh, a LinkedIn network, stuff like that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we make sure that there is a uh, immersion program with the South African faculty. So while they are in India, while they're studying with the contact classes here in India, we also have classes that are held by South African faculty for the same subjects and the same modules. What it does is it makes them very comfortable with the faculty that they're going to be studying with in South Africa. They become, uh, so for example, one of the concerns is understanding accents. So once they've started studying with the faculty, when they're already in India, it's very comfortable for them to get used to that system of education. So some, uh, these are some of the really important things that we do, uh, uh, I think, uh, which covers most of the basic grassroots level requirements of each and every student. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you, Dr. Sarbi. Thanks, Indrani. Yeah, I just want to touch as well that um, we're having a press conference this week in Mumbai and that's to launch our 500, um, 500 crores of um, our 500 crore initiative towards developing 5000 leaders across the globe from South Africa into Africa, uh, Mumbai into Asia uh, and across the other continents as well. And this initiative is really aimed at being able to offer over the pandemic a discount on our um, on our rates through our foundation and how this is enabled is that our foundation pledges a billion rand which is approximately 500 crores towards being able to afford a 60 percent discount on our online platform accreditation i'm going to hand over to dr marco saravania who's really the brainchild of leadership development and um and, and the heart of the organization, you know, we have a foundation called the Regenesis Foundation, and this is the work of the Regenesis Foundation to be able to reach out and make impact in the world through connecting heart and mind uh, intellectually and spiritually to people to create leadership and create a ripple effect to create a, a global revolution uh, through ethical leadership. Uh, over to you, Dr. Marco Saravani, if you can just take us through the um, foundation's initiative and the, the online platform and how we plan to achieve this revolution across the world. Yeah, so the greatest challenge and obstacle with education is, is uh, money, finance, funding, because uh, you know, people don't have money, parents don't have money, they cannot send their children you know, to the best uh, universities across the world. And education in the past was a privilege of those who had money. And those who didn't have money, they, unfortunately, they couldn't uh, afford to send their children to universities. You know. Now, thanks to technology, you know, we can bridge the gaps, gap. You know. So we can make uh, education accessible to all people across the world. Also, thanks to technology, we can drive cost of education. 
because now we can do live streaming sessions, we can record sessions, we can provide electronic libraries, and we don't have to build expensive uh, uh, buildings and uh, have a fancy you know, universities. You know? Because now university is becoming uh, mobile. You know? Now it's a university in the palm of your hand. You know? It's a mobile university, a mobile business school. That's the future of education. So at the Genesis, we've been thinking, how do we really um, transform and change the world of education? So we came up with this initiative, call it uh, In South African Rent, 1 billion, or in Indian rupees, 500 crores, where basically we provide access to education to 5,000 students from across the world by reducing um, school fees by 60%. Now, this initiative is available for a limited number of students and uh, it will be allocated on a first come, first serve basis. So, the whole uh, premise of, of this initiative is if we develop uh, uh, better leaders, you know, we can make a better world. So, it's really about making the world a better place by developing more conscious leaders and more entrepreneurs. So, if you look at all the problems we have today in the world, it's all related to leadership from wars to unemployment and poverty and diseases and racism and uh, inequities. It's really all bottom line is about, about leadership. So, so by developing better leaders, basically we create ripple effects uh, in communities and companies in, in countries and we make the world a better place. You know? That's really an initiative of our foundation and uh, provides opportunities to those who would not be able to access education through internet, so it's, it's online, online education. And it's been made possible by collaboration between um, various entities of, of the Genesis Group. Um, Genesis Business School, Genesis Foundation, Genesis Nigeria, Genesis India, and Genesis Alumni. So Genesis has uh, over 200,000 alumni across the world. And many of these alumni have donated their time. Many of our alumni um, uh, influential people, accomplished people, CEOs of large companies, uh, ministers and presidents of countries. And uh, they've donated, some of them have donated their time in terms of lecturing, in terms of uh, marking assignments and exams, in terms of developing learning material, various different activities. So it is really uh, through partnership and mobilization we'll be able to, to offer this initiative to, to people across the world. Um, while I'm talking about the Genesis alumni, I just wish to, to, to make a few more points. You know. um, in terms of the Genesis executive education, we have a very reputable clients, over a thousand reputable clients today, for whom we have done uh, like a customized type of uh, programs. You know. So some of our clients include some big global names, like for example, Mercedes-Benz and uh, Microsoft and Coca-Cola Barclays Bank, many, many government uh, departments from across the world. Because of our relationships with the industry and large corporates, and large multinationals, we're able also to place our students in those, in those uh, organizations. And we have some you know, great success stories of students coming from India um, and studying in South Africa and getting jobs with large companies like IBM, so very large salaries. So maybe just uh, while I'm, on, while I'm uh, I have opportunity to, to mention uh, two more things. Uh, people in India really, uh, when they look at South Africa, they think uh, South Africa is really not a great education destination. They're more, South Africa is more of a game reserves and nature reserves, you know. Um, and uh, people in India know South Africa because of Gandhi. Uh, Gandhi spent uh, more than 20 years in South Africa. And people know South Africa because of cricket, you know, because there's some great, you know, cricket players, you know. But my message is that South Africa is not just, you know, cricket and games, the nation which, uh, which affords and, and, and delivers, you know, um, really great qualification, great quality of education uh, at, uh, at uh, great value, value for money. Okay, so, that's really what I would like to say. Indani, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marco. So Mahatma Gandhi spent 21 years in South Africa. He arrived at the age of 23, and he really was part of the Indian um, struggle for, um, for equal rights and really supported education uh, to the Indian community at the, at the time of, of, of ripe apartheid. 
So he's really made a, a huge impact for Indian lives there. And that is something that really connects us heart and soul, uh, heart and soul to, to India and bridge that gap. Um, I think also uh, from a, a cultural perspective, um, I think we've touched on uh, the, um, the culturally, the, the suitability of having 160 years of Indians in South Africa. We've covered the alumni and the, um, the type of stronghold they have in the different economies, whether it be government or corporate. Uh, we have an extensive uh, network within our alumni. And I just wanna go take that into how do we network on behalf of our students? So one of the companies that Regenesis owns as well is called Denanda Talent. And Denanda Talent is the recruitment arm of the Regenesis Business School. Its, not, its sole function is not to just uh, recruit uh, for companies based on our students. Denanda Talent works with corporates as well as government to find external people jobs as well. So in their role of being able to fulfill the demand in South Africa for top executives, we network largely with financial, the top financial institutions, uh, government heads, uh, the large corporates that uh, Dr. Marco Saravania mentioned, a lot of JSC listed companies. And because of this transaction that we have with them of fulfilling their demand for vacancies, this assists us when our own graduates need to find jobs. So we're able to extend this into setting up interviews with companies that are already working alongside Regenesis because of our relationship through the recruitment arm. What do we do differently for our internal family that we wouldn't otherwise do for talent that we attract outside our organization? So I was very involved with Dr. Abby at the beginning of this year for our graduates that had graduated with us uh, the end of 2019. And one of the things that we did was to meet our graduates from Mumbai, uh, take them onto a role-playing workshop where we screened their CVs, helped them with their CV prep, helped them with how to present themselves at clients, uh, did role-playing on typical questions they would get asked at clients and really prepared them for this journey of entering the door and going through an interview process, which can be quite intimidating once you finish your studies and you entering into a new world of work. So we part of that journey with you. Second to that, uh, we also make contact with our clients prior to the interview to present your CV so they know who to expect and when to expect you. And once you get onboarded with the clients that we have, they do they too take you through an induction process and really support our students understanding that there is a cultural immersion that needs to happen. We were very successful this year to secure 100% of our 2019 graduates positions with companies that are aligned with Regenesis. And there's no reason why we won't be able to do this in the future as well. Denanda Talent is expanding rapidly. We have a contract uh, that we've signed with a, a supplier that will require some 5,000 jobs to be filled at the beginning of uh, 2021. And this is a five to seven year project that will span uh, outside of South Africa as well. And first preference will be given to our achievers within our home to be able to secure jobs and earnings in RANDs to be able to to climb your corporate ladder as well. There's any other questions uh, or comments from our panel? Over to you. Sandeep, if you could just monitor um, Facebook and also let me know uh, uh, if there's any questions coming from our Facebook uh, participants. So Dr. Marco, I, I, I'm gonna hand over back to you. I know that you've spoken quite a bit, uh, but I think uh, nobody sells essay the way you do uh, as a travel destination. And I think just combining, you have spoken about this, but we've had people, 50% of our people that have joined us, joined midway. 
So I just like you to cover those points again, because they would have definitely missed that. I think from an accreditation perspective, uh, we have that on our website and people get that. It's, it's the safety, the, sorry, <coughs> safety, security, and economy of South Africa that we, we could just re-emphasize on, please. Okay. So question is, why South Africa? And uh, I'll repeat again. So I think main question in the minds of parents and, and students is really about the return investment. You know, you know, if they invest uh, X amount of money, you know, are they going to get that money back and, and how much? You know? Okay. So, so my answer is really that uh, Regenesis provides great, great return on investment because cost of education is reasonable. It's half of the cost that people would pay to get internationally recognized qualifications. And uh, because of cost of not only education, but also cost of living in South Africa is much lower than in the UK or, or America or Canada or Australia. So I think that's the main, re main reason really, it's a really great return investment. You know? you know, we help students to get jobs you know, because of relationships with, with uh, large multinational companies and because of our own recruitment company. We help all students, we ensure they get interviews, you know, and we had some really great, great success stories. Uh, second, I think, biggest question in the minds of people is about safety and security. So I would like just to say, you know, I was not born in South Africa. I was born in, in Croatia. Some of you wonder about my accent, you know, and I'm sure most of you know about Croatia because of soccer, football. You know, there's some really great uh, football players from Croatia. But I came to, to South Africa about 30 years ago, and I'm still like, uh, alive and safe. And uh, so South Africa is a safe country if you do the right things, you know. You know? So there are obviously some parts of South Africa where, uh, which are not safe places, you know. But so is Mumbai and so is Delhi, you know. You know? And, uh, you know, in, in Delhi doesn't have a really great reputation uh, in terms of crime and safety and security. Uh, and many incidents of crime and, uh, and all types of problems, you know. So we spend a lot of time with our students, you know, basically inducting them and, and uh, training them and teaching them what to do, what not to do, which areas of town you don't go. You don't go to areas of town which is ridden by you know, poverty and crime and drug lords, you know. Uh, we stay and we work and study in Santon, which is the uh, uh, best part of South Africa and Africa, actually. As I mentioned earlier, it is... Uh, it is uh, um, Reach a square mile of Africa, and some of you from Mumbai, I would, I would compare it to like a BKC, Bandra Kula complex, you know, where all large multinational companies are in, in an area of few few kilometers. You know, and those are companies we interact with. Those are companies we get the uh, executives to lecture, to give out seminars, presentations. Those are corporates that we also try and place our students in. So. So it's really, it's really great return on investment. It's a safe destination. It's a beautiful country. And investment in international education is, 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 uh, is a great investment. You know? And from my own personal experience, I've been uh, lucky in my life. I've traveled to more than 90 countries. Uh, and uh, every new country I, I travel to you know, helps me to, to, to understand the world really better. It literally broadens my mind you know, and learn about new culture, new civilization helps me to break my own fears, you know. So, so it's really about breaking my own fears by, by traveling and seeing the world and, uh, and getting different ideas, you know, from different cultures, different people about entrepreneurship, about business, understanding how different societies function, you know. So, so Indian students who spend some time in Mumbai and then on the way to South Africa and Dubai and, and, and in South Africa, they basically become much more competitive, you know as compared to millions of other students in India. You know, I understand about 30 million students you know, enter higher education uh, system every year. You know. So those few hundred or thousand of students, they, they go internationally, they basically become on, on top. They become more employable with multinational companies because of international experience. You know, you know. And that, that international experience uh, it just helps people to break their fears, to build their confidence, you know to understand about different cultures, improve their English, you know. So it really transforms them completely, you know. 
intellectually, emotionally, you know, spiritually, you know, and, and physically. You know. So that's, that's really, uh, uh, I believe, greater investment we can make uh, in, is really in education. Now, education lasts with us forever. You know, no one can take it away from us. You know. It's the best and greatest and wisest investment we can make. You know. And traditional education is always more advantage, advantageous as compared to, to local educa education. Yeah. Okay, that's from my side, Indrani, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Marco. I think there's a point that you made there that we may have missed earlier. Education in South Africa and internationally is actually an investment. It's not a cost to a family. It's investing in, in the health because it upgrades the entire household by securing a good qualification that's internationally recognized and getting a career internationally. And even for those who have intention to come back into India, it puts you on a uh, different recruitment level altogether. You, your competitiveness is far more advantageous. You know, there's a, a question that, that has come up a few times, you know, the unemployment rate in both South Africa and India are high. So why would um, Indian nationals stand any better chance than what the unemployment rate in South Africa is. So something very powerful to consider is that the literacy rate in South Africa, especially on the highly skilled level, is about um, not more than 10% of our working uh, class is, is highly skilled. Um, and we suffer a brain drain for those South Africans that are engineers or CEOs. And so South Africa is always looking for skill uh, in the upper threshold of skill level, <clears throat> which is which is where we struggle with. Our unemployment rate is relatively high due to the unskilled level in South Africa. So going across and getting an MBA um, in South Africa definitely puts you in the higher threshold uh, where job seekers are, are in high demand. Further to that, I think we've covered uh, safety. And I think uh, one more thing about being a beautiful country is that we have beautiful climate. You never experience high climate uh, conditions in South Africa. If it snows, it's, you know, it's way away from Johannesburg. So we have winters that would possibly be in Johannesburg around 15, 12 to 15 degrees. Our summers are exceptionally warm um, and very outdoor type of weather. So it's a very easy transition from India to South Africa from a climate perspective. Uh, the uh, attractions around the game reserves, hiking trails. It's, it's a beautiful country outdoor. Um, and as well as sports is a big part of South African culture. So if you love cricket here, there's always cricket matches to attend in South Africa. Soccer is well attended. And then we have our national sport uh, called rugby as well, which is very different and quite a lovely experience to venture out to from India as well. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. We look forward to welcoming you to be a graduate, a future graduate of Regenesis Business School. Our sales team will be in touch with you and please do stay in touch. We'd love to be a part of this journey, this, this very, very significant part of a journey of learning, knowledge, spirituality, and investment for your future and the lives of, of your family. Thank you once again, wishing you a wonderful evening. Thank you to the South Africa team that has joined us. A really, really a pleasure to have you guys connect with us. And to our Mumbai team, our sales, marketing, and academics team, thank you as well for your valuable time. Good evening, everyone, and we'll sign off from Regenesis Mumbai. Thank you.